thing is, when you measure things, your actions as a result of your measurements are only going to be guided by your measurements. And if you're measuring the wrong thing, you, you can see it's pretty obvious that you're going to react to the wrong stimulus because yeah. you're measuring the wrong thing. So when we come to growth, <clears throat> we have this obsession in our modern economy with this concept of growth, and we hear it all the time from the politicians, GDP growth. And Australia's growth was great, and Victoria's growth was great. And you need to dissect what, what actually does that mean when they say that. Because we all take it as a given that a growth number that's big is good. The first is, is a big growth number good? I would say to you that that's highly debatable. We've got a finite planet, we've got finite resources. I would have thought that actually using the resources more slowly is probably good. Mm. Using them more quickly is probably bad. Mm. How is growth good? How is it good news that we are consuming and using and polluting and stuffing things up more? How is that good news? Because that's what more growth means. Can you explain the comparison of growth and debt? Yeah, well, it's actually really interesting that you asked me that question because this is where we flip into the second side of the equation. Why is growth good? It's all about money. Money, our money system, most people still don't understand how our money system works. Our money system equals debt. Our money is loaned into creation. Our mm. money is completely fictitious. Mm. Every single loan means someone's making the loan, someone owes the money, someone has to pay it back with interest. Our money system requires that the debt keep on growing and growing and growing. So that you can pay it back. So you can pay it back. Somebody borrows some money, somebody has to pay that money back with interest. So the premise behind of all that is that the money has to keep on growing. You can't pay money back with interest if the money hasn't grown. Mathematically, you can't do it. I give you 10 bucks, you've got to give me 11 bucks back. Where's that extra dollar coming from? It's not coming from anywhere if it can't be created from somewhere. So the bottom line is, we need infinite growth because our money system and our economic system demands it. Because it's all based on interest. Because it's based on this thing called money and money is loaned into creation and it's loaned into creation with an interest rate. So why do we need to keep immigration going? So when you talk about immigration, immigration is a slightly different thing and this is the second part of the discussion that we were having earlier. Politicians will say Victoria's got great growth. We grew. We grew at 4% last year. The growth number has to keep going up because our money system demands that it keeps going up. Mm -hmm. Because more and more people have to keep on coming in and borrowing more and more money to pay off all the money that was borrowed last time. There is another description for this. It's actually called a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> you need more and more people to keep coming in down the bottom end to keep on taking out loans so that people who have taken out loans at the top end can give their loans to those guys who are coming at the bottom end to keep on taking on the loans so the guys on the top end can actually not have the loans anymore, can actually go and go off into their retirement. So you've got a cycling situation where more and more entrants need to come in and take loans from the people who are going out the other side, but the actual system itself is not doing anything useful other than cycling money from the guys going out to the guys coming in. Now, if you or me go and do that, that's jail. Or as they say in South Africa, that's the trunk. <laughs> Straight to jail for you. But if you're a central banker or a politician or whatever, that's good. So, 
In the immigration context, here in Melbourne, for example, we have a situation for years and years and years and years and years where Melbourne is fantastic. We've got growth every single year, growth. Have a little bit of a look behind the covers and you say to yourself, hang on a second here. Now I'd like to give you a very simple analogy. The analogy I gave you about the household. Mm. If you've got a household and you've got two people in the household and each person in the household earns 10 bucks, mm. the household's worth 20 bucks. And then what happens is someone says, hey, I've got a couple of mates down the road. They want to come and live with you guys. And my two mates have also got 10 bucks each. So there's another 20 bucks. So they come and they move into your house. So now your household's worth 40 bucks because you've got four of you living in there and it's 40 bucks. You guys are full marks, boy. You've got 100% for economics because you've had 100% growth. Your household was worth 20 bucks. Now it's worth 40 bucks. You boys are on a winner. So you think to yourselves, hang on, we're on such a winner, and this is how politicians are thinking, remember this, you're on such a winner, why don't we bring another 100 guys in here? <laughs> we're gonna blow the growth numbers out of the water. We are gonna get the gold medal of Olympics for growth. So what happens is the household that gets the gold medal for growth it's only a two bedroom household, but there's 700 guys living in there. And they have got more growth than any other household in the entire neighborhood. But actually, there are some people in the neighborhood who go, I know they've got the gold medal for growth, but if those guys want to take a shit, they've got to wait for like four hours. <laughs> no, if those guys want to eat something, the ki there's a queue in the kitchen. <laughs> that might be a really good growth story if you've had a lobotomy. <laughs> but if you, have, if, you, if you haven't had a lobotomy, the growth story's got something sus about it. Now, what is it that's sus about it? I'll tell you what's sus about it. The sus about it part is that growth is not free. Growth comes with a cost. The cost is congestion, Longer waiting times for the shit house, seven people to a bed, all that kind of stuff. Those are the costs of jamming 700 people. And into more debt. Bed. But the beauty of our economic system is when they say to you, when the politician stands there hand on heart and says to you, we've got growth of 4%, that's because the side of the ledger that shows the growth they are under no obligation to show you the other side of the ledger which shows you the cost. So, this is the issue. If the balance sheet were properly balanced and if we showed the costs as well as the benefits, mm -hmm. you would realize that growth is not all it's cracked up to be. There's a thing called net growth. The net growth is the growth minus the cost. There is a term for that. It is used for that. You'll never see that term. It's not spoken by politicians because that number in Melbourne is a shocker. It's called growth per capita. And if you have a look at the per capita around the world in the Western economies, the per capita, it's not going up. So the whole growth thing is a total fraud. This is the definition of fake news. This is real fake news. Never mind, oh, the Democrats stole the election or such and such. Put his finger somewhere it shouldn't have been or whatever. Mm. The real fake news is the real numbers, the real what's going on in the world is it dollied up and we are fed inflation numbers, growth numbers, GDP numbers, all, it's all nonsense. <laughs>